Thank you and thank you for inviting me to come to speak and thank you for coming to listen. So um, my name is Veronica. I have a background from uh, KTH. So I studied computer science and I also have a background from uh, sport. So I played team handball for around 20 years. And uh, in a world of uh, technology, machine learning, blockchain, uh, artificial intelligence and so on, I'm uh, here today to talk to you about people. So in my world, it's always down to the people to deliver and how people can learn from sports, or especially people in business can learn from sports in how we can create winning teams. So I believe that business is a team sport. And very often when I'm working and in, in work situations, when I'm comparing the situation with a, situa a similar situation in sport, it very often becomes very, very clear to me. So if you're looking at uh, Slatan, everyone wants, or a lot of people wants a Slatan in its teams, but it doesn't want 11 Slatan on the field. It wants to build a team around him. Uh, and to me, it's equally important that I know my people that works around me. I know their driving forces. I know how they will react to things. I know where I should pass the ball for someone else to score. And to me, team stands for together everyone achieves more which is uh, what you need if you're going to be a winner. And uh, as I said, I've been into sport for many, many years. And one thing that I learned or li I liked with sport is feedback. So you do something and you instantly know if it worked or didn't work. And maybe that is one of the reasons I loved computer uh, science and loved developing and writing codes, because you get instant feedback you know if it's working. And the same thing I think is within teams. You should give people feedback, instant feedback, not six months later or something. So if you want to build strong teams, tell each other. I think reality is always your best friend. And when building teams, as I said, you can't have 11 slatons in the field, but uh, we believe in snowboarding diversification. And I really think that putting together the right team members with different backgrounds, thinking in different ways. So if we would have, we are a company of 300, if we would have 300 Veronica, I'm telling you that wouldn't be a very successful company. Uh, we would all think in the same way and come to the same conclusion and that I can do on my own. So I want 300 other opinions and I want to get the best out of everyone. So. Uh, currently, we are over 40 nationalities, we are, which we are extremely proud of. People are moving here in order to work with us to develop these systems. And um, if you want to be best in the world, in what you're doing, and you have this team, uh, then you need to think of it as a national team or as a world, someone playing in world championships or... Uh, some, yeah, uh, like a, an extremely good team. Then you, if you have a national team and you view it like that, then you need national team players. It is kind of obvious to everyone that uh, if you need to grow, you can't recruit uh, people that is in league two, three, four or five. They will just score in the wrong goal. Uh, they will, yeah, they will put you into trouble. So high performance people like to get involved with other high performance people. And it's very important that you build a strong team around you. So let's say that you have this team and uh, you have the best team in the world and you're really enjoying it. So how do you take this team to be a winning team? So doing like everyone else is doing will by default uh, put you at average. So then you need to do something differently. And just doing something differently doesn't make you a winner. So you need to understand what is the difference that makes the difference. And that's the key to success in my book. One very interesting thing, I think, is that we are, John Luthien is bringing all of these speakers from the financial industry to a tech, uh, to a tech cam uh, campus. So what has finance and technology? Would, would this have happened five years ago or ten years ago? Would this have been the place where we brought the, uh, some of the leaders within the financial industry? That is equally inspiring to think like that as thinking, what if uh, Mark Zuckerberg was the CEO of any bank? Would that technology infrastructure look identical to the infrastructure it looks today? 
I don't think so. Uh, no one really knows because it hasn't happened. But uh, what we can see is that the financial ecosystem is created by business people. And they've done a tremendous job, and it's a fantastic industry. It is the backbone um, in the capital markets, within banking, with that, to get countries working properly. Uh, so it's created by business people. It will be changed by technology. And I think that's why we are here, because you are our future. It is with technology that we will make a safer world, a better world, a more efficient world, that we can trust even more. And I think that the banks, they've done, a, as I said, a very good job. They've been, they are open for change, and uh, um, they handle change very good. Some of the banks, I think the oldest banks was created 1400 something. The world looked very different then, and they have still survived, and a few world war, and uh, America did belong to someone else, and so on. So they're definitely capable of change. But this change that we are now in the middle of, or in the starting point of, which will be changed by technology, I think is one of the toughest uh, change for them. Because when you are to take decision about the future, and you look, you look at your business today, and this is where you make money today, and this is where you will make money tomorrow, and you're realizing that going from here to here is all about technology then it would be good to have some kind of competence and understanding of technology when taking those decisions. And it's, it's all about, uh, and it's a challenge for all of us because it goes so quickly. And I don't know uh, how many of you that know how the world will look like in 2070. I don't. But that's approximately when most of you will retire. So the question is how we educate for a world that we don't know how it will look like. And that's a challenge. And I think the answer is constant learning. You have to be open-minded. You have to take in new technology, new facts. You have to constantly learn. And uh, <clears throat> personally, I'm very happy because um, researchers think that the first person that will be 200 years old is already born. And I'm just keeping my finger crossed it's me. Uh, <laughs> I am really curious about technology. I have a passion for technology. I go to the office every day to change the world, to change the financial ecosystem with technology. And uh, being 200 years old and seeing all the magic that I know you will develop in the future and you kids and so on, that's really appealing thoughts to me. We are uh, at the right spot. Uh, to bringing finance into a tech campus is, is uh, exactly where we should be because this is where the world have to, uh, have to meet. And we listened to Peter before and uh, he gave us the story why Stockholm is so uh, uh, in the forefront of fintech. And I think um, it's a very good explanation. I think another uh, explanation is also that we are extremely good in building companies that allow for new ideas, that is allowing for innovation, where people can actually contribute, where we have flat organization and it's up to you to deliver. And I think that's a super important part in being creative and continuously innovating your offerings. So thank you for listening and good luck with your careers.